Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, ASA to FTD Migration. Now we've already went to the website to download the Firepower Migration tool, and we're gonna go ahead and do the installation. We'll go ahead and accept the end user license agreement. And now this is just installed on your local machine. We'll go ahead and proceed. And you can see we can migrate policies from ASA, Palo Alto, Fortinet, and Checkpoint. In our case, we're gonna focus on ASA. Now we've already downloaded or extracted the configuration from our ASA and we're gonna go ahead and import that and that's going to be the basis of the migration for that specific ASA. The nice thing about it though, some of these objects are going to get ported in and those objects are obviously going to be available to any device that you want to deploy to. And then you've got the device specific information that of course is going to be specific to the device that you're deploying to in the firepower threat defense world. All right, we're going to go ahead and log in here. Once logged in, it talks about the pre-migration instructions, right? Stable IP, FMC version, account, FTD is optional, and then the ASA configuration requirements. We're gonna select ASA 8.4, and we're gonna go ahead and upload, do a manual upload of the configuration. Now we could also connect directly to the ASA and pull that information down. In our case, we've already extracted the information that we need into the config file, and that's what we're going to import here. Now it's parsing the data, and you can see here we've got a quick summary. Um, 10 access control lists, routes, NAT uh, information, site-to-site -site VPN, network objects, port objects, dynamic route objects, and logical interfaces. We'll go ahead and hit Next. We're going to now connect to our Firepower Management Center. So we'll go ahead and enter an a host name or an address here. We'll go ahead and click connect, add our credentials, and log in. Now, once this is ready to go here, we're successfully connected. We have the opportunity to select the FTD devices that we want to uh, push this configuration to. In our case, we're gonna do it without FTD, but you can see here, we can certainly pick the device and do that as part of the migration here. Now we've got device configuration, shared configuration, optimizations, inline grouping, and then there's summary of information below each one of those categories. Now we're just gonna keep this pretty simple here. Uh, the use case is just to showcase the migration tool. Again, there's the summary of the features, but let's go ahead and start the conversion process. All right, now it's complete. Again, we can see reference to our uh, each line item, access control list, routes, NAT, site-to-site -site VPN, the objects, and logical interfaces. We can go ahead and download the pre-migration report and review it. Now, if we find anything with configuration line errors, um, maybe there's some things that we've just noticed visually that we wanted imported that weren't included, we can certainly go back, rerun the pre-migration tool again to capture that information. All right, so everything looks good. I think at this point we can go ahead and click Next. And it's just stating here that we've not selected an FTD device. Again, we can drop this down, it gives us a nice workflow of where we are in this process. Let's go ahead and hit next. And here it's saying we wanna map security zones and interface groups. Um, and so it, it certainly calls this out. And, and so what we can do is we can either add security zones or interface groups, or we auto create here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that auto create as you can see, and you can now see that being populated. FMC security zones inside, outside, and then we've got interface groups as well. Now we're into the uh, access control list. And in that list, we've got our entries that were migrated from the configuration of the ASA. Now here we can make some changes as well. So we don't have to live by whatever it is that we've pulled out of the ASA. We have an opportunity not only to change the rule action, um, 
but we also have the ability to change the, the actual um, state itself in regards to additional functionality that we want for specific rules. For example, we may want to turn on malware. We may want to turn on intrusion prevention for some flows, and we can certainly do that. We've got IPS, we've got file policies, and, and logging information as well. So here we're going to go ahead and select those three rules. We'll include an IPS policy as part of these specific access control entries or rules. We'll go ahead and hit select. And you can see the icon change here. So we know we've added IPS here um, to those specific rules. And we'll go ahead and select a couple more here. Let's, uh, let's grab one, two, four, five, and six. And we're going to go ahead and click logging. And here we're going to log at end of connection. We're going to send that to the event viewer and we're gonna save. So nice and clean, easy way of getting those uh, access control entries out of ASA, enhance them to add additional layers of security and push that to firepower threat defense. Now here we're looking at port objects. So again, we can go in here and do a rename of an object. Maybe the object name within ASA uh, wasn't great. And, and so um, we have an opportunity to change that before we import the objects. And, we, and, and that just ensures that we don't have to go back and do this within FMC, right? Firepower Management Center. We can do that at the very beginning and have that all automated for us. Now here's the validation summary. We can see what we're gonna change here. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and push that configuration to Firepower Management Center. All right, so that looks good. We'll go ahead and close this out. And let's go ahead and log into Firepower Management Center and let's have a quick peek to see, did anything really change here? Did some of the settings that we've modified, in fact, made its way into Firepower? itself. So let's check the policy first and we can see here there's this policy um, very descriptive name there. We can certainly change that name if we want to but let's go ahead and edit this policy and just have a look at all the rules that are in place and we can see a couple of things here. One is that HTTPS port object seems to be changed here because we can see the one above it is from ASA. And we can also see some of the conditions change and the IPS rules and logging elements added to those specific rule sets that we wanted it enabled on. Pretty easy to migrate from many different platforms into Firepower Threat Defense.